going to sound a little closer at the numbers here. And here's what we found. More than 30 million Americans have diabetes and more than 7 million require insulin every day. Yale researchers found 14% describe a catastrophic level of spending on insulin. This means after paying for food and housing, they spent nearly half their income on insulin. The problem is especially bad in these 12 counties in Ohio here. A new Senate report calls them insulin deserts. And none of the counties is located in the Miami Valley. The closest is Madison County, which is just east of Clark County. Wright State University is partnering with Premier Health to expand the university's healthcare programs. The partnership will add allied health programs to Wright State's academics. It will also expand clinical opportunities for nursing and medicine students. As part of the partnership, the Boonshaw School of Medicine will hire a new dean. That person will also be the chief academic officer for Premier Health. And Google has released 2023's top searches, top search topics from Dayton. The Last of Us was the top search TV show for Daytonians, followed by The Night Agent and The Golden Bachelor. Taylor Swift's Eras Tours was the top search tour of the year, followed by Beyonce's Renaissance World Tour. And it looks like Daytonians have some pent-up aggression. Our area ranked third in the country for rage rooms near me. So, so neither, so neither Robert or I knew what a rage room was, and we were pretty. I thought it was hilarious to find out. Yeah, it's when you go in a room and throw a hissy fit, like. I guess maybe when you were two years old and you threw a temper tantrum in the grocery. It's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> that practice continued on until you're an adult because that's what we need now. We need rage rooms. But you might need one this week if you're one of those rage room subscribers because it's going to be a little bit dicey moving into tomorrow. A little bit snowy, a little bit cold. Let's take a look at the bottom line here. What are we expecting exactly? Well, we do expect some scattered snow by the morning. It's very possible it may fall as rain briefly before it falls as snow, because as I mentioned, temperatures are dropping steadily throughout the day. Some snow squalls are possible. What that is are, are the periods of real low visibility because you might have maybe some heavy snowfall, some brief heavy snowfall, not to mention some strong winds. And so just be aware of that. There may be some random squalls around the region of very low visibility, but we're not expecting a whole lot of accumulation we are expecting snow, though. For everyone in the Miami Valley, there is a good chance. The biggest risk, really, is as we move into the evening hours, as temperatures drop below freezing, we might see some icy patches across the region. So here's a look at our snow accumulation forecast. The best chance for accumulation is going to be likely north of I-70. Now, everyone has a chance. I'm telling you, there's a chance, at least for a trace, but on average, about an inch, some places up to two inches, again, especially north of I-70. If you had to break it down in even simpler terms, most likely a majority of you will get at least an inch. At most, maybe about two inches. Some places could see some localized heavier amounts than that. But generally, there's a good chance for snow for us tomorrow throughout the morning and into the afternoon. Cloud cover right now, there's some very low cloud cover. It's in the light gray. It's a little hard to see on this map. But you'll notice this band of clouds going from, I'd say, the western part of Michigan and then down through Indiana and Illinois. That cloud cover, that little line of clouds, that's the cold front. And behind it, we do have some snow already falling in parts of uh, the driftless region of Wisconsin. They call it that because that's where the glacier stopped, and so it's real hilly there. And so that snowfall activity is going to move through northern Illinois soon and eventually to us. Let's time it out here on the future cast. Mainly cloudy, really pretty uneventful overnight. Here's a look at about 9 a.m. You start to see some snow flurries. Again, this could fall as rain a little bit earlier and briefly, but it will turn to snowfall as temperature dro temperatures drop. Notice how kind of scattered it is. It's not widespread snow. It's not heavy snow all day in any particular area. Just some scattered snow showers. There may be some heavier bands like the dark blue you see here that moves through. Notice it's also north of I-70. And then it really kind of tapers into the evening. It may not go away completely. You can see a little spot here at 10 p.m. There may be a few more spots around that time, but still fairly scattered, fairly isolated even. And then as we move into the overnight hours, maybe a couple snowflakes here and there, but eventually we'll be left with some clearing skies by Tuesday. Also, it's going to be a little bit windy, like I mentioned, with those snow squalls. So we're looking at 33 mile per hour wind gusts at noon. That's not sustained wind speeds. That's wind gusts. And we could see some wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour moving into tomorrow afternoon. So keep that in mind. 35 for the temperature when you wake up. See, the low temperature is going to be at midnight. The high temperature is going to be 
in 30 minutes. So when you wake up, about 35 degrees. By the afternoon, about 36. So a cold day tomorrow. And then more seasonable and fairly dry for the rest of the week with showers returning close to the weekend. It's been in business for decades, but there's one kind of toy you will not find in this iconic store. We'll show you how the oldest toy store stays, bu stays busy by selling toys that have been around even longer. 